everyone. Another 20 minute video, this time focusing on your legs and arms. I am going to use light weights today. One, two, three pounds. Your choice, I would suggest one to two pounds. I also found out that if you use these big smart water bottles as weights, they're close to between one and two pounds. So obviously you want to do some hammer curls, you can do that. I'm thinking that just a normal Dasani water bottle or something is you know enough if you don't have weights at home. I also have a chair here, just the back of a dining room chair for balance. Um, for most of it, I'm gonna ask you to challenge yourself and not use that chair, but you decide how you feel today. So let's start with your legs just slightly wider than hip distance apart. Get some big breaths in, inhale up. And I want you to push the air out of your lungs. Pretend you're sending your air across the room. No germs included. Shoulders glide down the back. Inhale up. Exhale down. This time as you exhale down, clasp your fingers behind your back and reach your arms long, opening up the collarbone, drawing the shoulder blades together. And if your shoulders allow for it, lift up a little bit just to get some openness through the chest since we're going to be working those arms today. And then release the arms forward. Shoulders still stay down. Reach towards me. Reach the arms, pulling the shoulder blades apart. Tuck the pelvis. Look at your tummy. So you have a little start of a hollowness to your belly, roundness to the back. Palms face out like you're pushing something away. And let's find that clasp behind the back again. Arms reach long towards the floor or reaching up towards the back of the room. To me, that feels really good today, so I'm going to do that. Good, then release. Let's stand today a little wider than we first started. So I have a mat down, so I'm going to stand a little wider than the width of the mat. I'm going to do a little pelvic tilt and just kind of glide my back down an imaginary wall, letting my knees and groin open up and then glide back up. I have the weights in hand because those are going to come into play in a little bit. So if you opted to carry around some weights or some water bottles, you can hold them there. Good, now come down as far as you can. Tuck your pelvis so you don't have your bum sticking out. Let your knees just push away, push away. You're gonna feel an engagement back here and obviously a stretch here. If you've had a hip replacement, you're gonna modify the width of your knee to within your doctor's orders or your comfortable range of motion. Good, so hold it out there. Sink a little bit deeper, lift the right heel. Lift the left heel, just rolling through the center of the foot. A little bit of ankle work, but also warming up the quads, keeping everything kind of blood flow, I guess, to the tips of your toes from the top of your head. Good, now let's do both. So up and down, warming up. Four more, three, two, and one, heels settle in, press the heels in, really press the heels in. You can even open, like lift the toes a little bit. And then from there, rest the weights on your thighs, just bounce down just a little bit, just about an inch, keeping the tuck of the pelvis, chest is lifted, shoulders are together, collarbone open, shoulders relaxing away from the earlobes so we don't wanna shrug. Now let's hold it down there, take the palms together, reach the right arm up right in long, line with the shoulder, then the left and the right, left, up, down. So we're warming up the deltoid. There's a slight flexion to the elbow, so we're not hyperextended, but we're not completely bent either. People with sh shoulder rotator cuff issues, adjust your range of motion. Go the less weight, if you had any weight, I would say no weight would be fine. Good, now let's just make it a smaller range of motion. So not going all the way down to the leg, keeping the wrist and elbow directly in front of the shoulder. Just a little bit. Keep breathing. It starts to get hard around now. Depends on what you're lifting. For me, I have three pounders. So it's already warming me up. Warming me up. And now really small. Just like a little, little shuffle. Shuffle of the arms as if we're shuffling our feet, we're shuffling our arms. Let's do four more. And three, two, and one. Allow both arms to come down. Roll open the shoulders just to release some of that and allow the weights that are in your hands to 
Drag the shoulders away from your ears. Come up nice and tall. I want you to step forward with your right foot and back with your left. Your right foot, the toes are at 12 o'clock. Your left foot, the toes are at nine o'clock. Sink deeply into the right knee. Don't let the right knee come over the right toe until you feel an engagement of your back left glute. And I want you to feel an openness to the hip flexor here. Your body then will square towards me. We're gonna do a little neutral back hinge, switch, switch both arms back, small hammer curls. So the hammer curl typically is associated with a bicep curl, which kind of this is, but I want you to focus on your triceps now. We're keeping the arm long as we reach behind us, and we're keeping the arms tucked closely into the body. So they're not out here, they're in here. Small little curls, little pulses, focusing on the length. Now let's pause on the length, really, really long. Pull the shoulders away from the ears, reach the arms longer like there's something behind you. And then pulse up for eight, seven, six, open the collarbone, four, three, two, one. Now, palms face up, press up, two, three. Try and get that brief moment, still keeping your arms long where you can't see the weight behind you. So it's not this where you can see it the whole time. Try and get it behind you, open up the collarbone, sink deeper into that front leg. I found myself lifting up, so the left glute is getting a workout the whole time. Good balance challenge, draw both weights forward. Drag the left leg in, reach it up, hold it. Five, four, three, two, one. Left foot goes down as the arms go up for one, two. Squeeze the right glute for your, for your balance. Good, three more for 10. Excellent, reach the left leg up. Do a little neutral back hinge as you reach the left leg back. Grow tall with your torso as the left knee comes up. Chest press and down. Reach, so I'm kind of leaning and bowing towards you, pushing my long arm back. Lift the left knee up, push up and down. Let's do two more like that. The key to this, if you've trained with me before, you know that I always ask you to focus on the rooted leg, the, the trunk to your tree, not the limbs. So the right glute has to be engaged to maintain that balance. The belly needs to be in and up. Last one, good. Now let's switch that out. Step way back with your right foot. The right toes go to three o'clock. The left toes stay at noon, 12. <laughs> Lean into it. Right glute is engaged, right hip is open. We're kind of spiraling the right leg in a little bit, and then we're gonna square the shoulders. From there, sink deeply until you feel the right glute, and just do some kind of lift and lowers. Slight flexion, so we don't wanna be like this, but we also don't wanna to be too trying to extend it long here. Light touch on the fingertips, so we don't overdo the forearm. We want to get the deltoids in it again. I did it again. I started to lift out of my lean, lean into it. Left knee does not pass the left toes. Three more. Two. One. Balance challenge. Drag the right foot in. I took the mat with it. Take the right leg up and down. Now focus on squeezing the left glute and Lift it up, and as you bow, it comes back. Ideally, we're not gonna let the right foot touch the ground as we reach back. You might have to, just kind of as little, so you might have to just take it down there for a minute. That's fine, no judgment, you're still working it. Up, back. back. Good. Let both feet stand next to each other. Do a little bit of a neutral back hinge again, which is just that we maintain the alignment of the ear, shoulder, and hip when we do that, so we're not bowing. And I want you to just do what people, I guess, would call a fly. So it's kind of hug the tree in a bowed position, like this. 
So keep up for eight more of those. Seven. I told you guys it would be arms today. We haven't even gotten to the hard part of the legs. This is a warm up for the legs, right? Two more because I lost count. Last one. Now we're gonna do kind of a crossover. So I want you to do one arm at a time. I'm gonna take my right arm first and then cross it over, up. So it's a pendulum swing, but with control. So for the next four, I want you to picture or focus on pulling up and then let gravity help you pull it up. Your mind's eye can do an amazing job of focusing muscle work. On the next four, we're gonna pull it up and let it drop slowly, controlling the return. Pull it up, drop slowly. We're focusing on the return. Drop slowly and drop slowly. Now, let's just start with four on the left, crossing over. Almost like we're picking something up, scooping something off the ground. We're bowing forward here just so we have a little more room so that that weight doesn't bonk in and bruise your thigh. Now for the next one, pull it up. And gravity takes you home. Three more, pull it up, think about it. Two more of the pull up, not all together, two more. Good, next four, we're gonna pull it up and then focus on letting it slowly come down. So resist pushing through water, pretending we're in water aerobics right now, right? And pull it through, 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 very good. We're gonna put the weights down now, or whatever you were holding, maybe nothing. And I want you to come to your chair or whatever you have as a point of balance. I'm gonna fix my mat here so I don't trip over it. Um, I don't want you to be um, concerned, so if you wanna stand up against a wall or something, you can do that. Both feet are about six inches apart. I'm standing nice and tall. I'm gonna rise up just a wee bit on my heels and then slide down an imaginary wall. This is the one time in Pilates and fitness where it's okay for your knees to come a little bit in front of the toes. So I want you from there just to bounce, keeping the heels lifted the whole time. So just again, on the quads, believe me, we will get the hamstrings later. And this arm can do whatever you want. It can go behind your back. Some people feel that keeps them honest with the tuck of their pelvis. I think that's probably a good sign. And if you're really confident, you can obviously do both arms, doesn't matter to me. I want you to feel secure. If you're working out at home by yourself especially, I please, please would encourage you to hold on. Now holding it down there, lower the heels, lift them. Your upper body's quiet, and as you press your heels down, really sink that energy down into the heels. It's gonna give you a very good stretch to your Achilles and calves, and it's gonna fire up the shins. So we're, whenever we work anything, we're working opposing muscle groups and sometimes we forget about the shins. It's an important, important muscle to keep us stable when we're doing our walking, all that rest of the stuff. Good, now let's just do pedaling. One knee at a time, one foot at a time. And in your mind's eye, again, you're pressing down into the heel. I want that energy of the heel to feel so intense that you feel it fire up into your glutes. Good, three more, two, and one, come nice and tall, face the wall or your chair, whatever you have. Your hips begin squared, your shoulders are squared. I'm gonna take my left hand onto this chair and when I hydrant out my right leg, my right shoulder wants to come with it. And that kind of makes it, with some pillows for the guest room here, showed you how much I'm working at home. This is part of working at home, right? Figuring out your space. When you lift your left hydrant. If you lift this shoulder, it's kind of easy peasy lemon squeezy. You want to challenge yourself, re-square the shoulders like this. So from there, the knee should be behind your leg, so it's not forward like this, it's behind. Tuck the heel close into the bum. I just now assisted that with my hand. It actually felt kind of good to do that on my quad. Keep the heel as close as you can to your bum. The right foot now is what's lifted. I'm gonna push it over to the left. Push it over. When I do that, I fire up that area right where my gluteus minimus is. And I'm also having a light touch to this chair so that my right leg feels its need to support me. We don't wanna make it feel left out right now. If you have a hip replacement, you're gonna modify your range of motion. It's still down, try to get it still behind you though and try to cross the right foot over the center line of the body if you can. 
always work within your doctor's recommendation and how you feel. Sharp biting pain should not be your goal. You should feel like a slow, warm ache melt through your muscles. We're gonna add a little something so it's now over, up, over, up. Try to keep your shoulders squared. I'm looking at you guys because I want to, because I'm addressing you. You guys should keep your vision forward unless your computer or phone, whatever it is that you are looking at is next to me. Good, now the next one, take a one finger touch to the wall or chair that you're touching, and then a slight bend to the standing left leg and a straighten. We're keeping this behind us. Straighten, slight bend. Weight of the body is completely in the left leg, so we should be able to take our hands off of the chair, just for a little moment, just to test our balance, test how much weight of the body we have. This is really gonna warm up the left leg. Ah, warm is a nice word. Two more. Last one, we're gonna stop on the little pause and add a little something to this back leg. Now we still have it back, we still have the heel close. We're gonna lift it, lengthen it, bend down. The right knee is staying behind the left knee. I literally just kicked the bed. <laughs> I had myself a nice bruise on that one. That gives me a little guidance point though. That means I have to keep it lifted. That means I got lazy for a minute there. Three more. Two. One. Good, now cross the right knee over the left, sorry, the right ankle over the left knee and sit down for a little yummy stretch. You'll feel a nice stretch here, not as much in the left leg. And then come tall again. Now on this one, I'm gonna move my chair over so that I can have my open leg facing you guys. We're gonna start the same thing. So I have my shoulders squared, hips squared, I come down, my right elbow is down, my left knee comes up. I have to get my smart water example people over there so I don't kick them down. I do have long legs. So from here, once the leg is up, I'm gonna reach behind just for a little stretch. Pull the heel close to the bum. When I let go, I wanna keep the heel as close to the bum as I can, then re-square my shoulders. Just push the left toe over towards the right, just a small little Kind of drawing the knee away from me and keeping the heel as close to the bum as you can. Two more. Last one. Now, small light touch, maybe no touch depending on how brave you are. Small bend to the right knee and a straighten. Ten all together, so nine more there. It's a really small little pulse and your goal is to focus on getting the entire weight of your body into the right leg. Five more, four, three, you're doing well, it hurts I know, two, one. We're gonna end down in there, lift this back up, push it over and up, over and up. Oops, I think we went long on this one. So up, long, bend down. See, I'm slipping on my teaching skills. The more I get away from it, the lazier my mind gets on getting instruction. So teaching you guys helps me with my train to brain, train to brain, <laughs> because it keeps me fresh. I've been what, teaching for 14 years now and it's quick to lose it. Just like muscle atrophy occurs in 12 days apparently, so does teaching brain atrophy. <laughs> Good, one more, reach it long. Draw the left ankle to the right knee Sit down for a little stretch, take a breath, and exhale. Wonderful, I'm gonna move the chair out of the way here because I'm gonna come to a little bit of mat work. Um, I also forgot to mention to you guys that I have this yoga brick that I have. And just so you guys know, it's kind of cool because look, it opens up and you can put stuff inside of it. If you go to a yoga class, you can put your keys and cell phone in it. And one whirl, that's O-N-E, one word, W-H-I-R-L, um, sells these online. I forget how much they are, but they're a nice investment if you go to yoga class. You can use a hardback book, take the cover off so you don't rip the cover, but I'm gonna use this underneath my right foot as I come down for bridge. Not sure if you guys can see me. Hopefully, I've spaced the camera well. So the leg is a little bit out of 90 degrees. The left foot's right next to it. It's not in front of or behind. 
I don't think you guys can see me. Ah, I'll come way over here. Hopefully you can see me now. So I'm gonna push into the right leg and come up into bridge. Both hips should stay stable. So I'm gonna put my hands here as a reminder. I'm gonna lift the left leg up and then dip the right bum down, push it back up, dip. So it's as if someone's pulling my left leg straight up to the ceiling and I'm really engaging the right glute. Dip down, press up strong. Five more, up, four, use your glute. Three, otherwise your hamstring might, cl might cramp. Two, one. Let your spine settle all the way down. And just kind of kick that over so your left foot can have its moment. Put the foot flat on the brick or book. Take the spine off the mat by peeling it. Press heavily into the left foot. Draw the right knee into the chest. Right toes to the ceiling. If you're soft-legged here, I don't really care. Dip down left glute, up down, up. Think of squeezing from the glute. The hamstring is going to want to take over here. And especially for those of us who've been walking, running, biking to get our cardio in, that's a tight area. So we want to make sure we focus on the glute and don't overstress the hamstring. But we have to work a little bit, right? Because we did quads at the beginning. One more. Good. Come down. Articulate the spine all the way down. Draw the knees into your chest. Take a breath. <sighs> Hands on the back of the thighs and come up. Hopefully you saw all that. I really have no sense what my camera was able to capture. I'm going to still use the brick. It's not necessary, but I'm gonna take it just outside my right shoulder. We're gonna work between two panes of glass here. And I want you to take your right arm and just kind of let it find the floor. For me, it's gonna be the brick. And then the left leg comes straight out from there. Squaring shoulders, squaring hips, so you don't want to collapse on the upper shoulder. I'm gonna lift and lower. Now here's the trick. As usual in Pilates, it looks like I'm using the left leg. That's what's happening. But really what's killing me is this right hip. So if I can keep this right foot directly behind the right knee, it really bites in a good and loving Pilates way into the right hip. If I let this foot come like that, did you see that? Then I lose that connection. Now for me, because I'm tight, sometimes I do a little bit of that. I cheat a little bit just so I can get the exercise over with. Now keep the leg lifted. It's supposed to be at the same level as the hip. Sometimes it's down there. Respect your body, do the best you can. Lift it up, flex the foot to the bum, reach it long. Flex, long, flex, long, three more. Two more, I'm gonna keep it long on the last one. Small circles, eight in each direction. Six, five, four, three, two, one, other direction, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Here's the yummy part. Let that left foot come down. Ah, reach over, it's like a kneeling mermaid. Take a breath, open up this right side of the waist. Take both hands maybe and just assist the stretch by pulling your right hand down with the left arm and then come tall. Let's switch to the other side. Then we're going to end with some more arms. And then you guys can call it a day that you've done something great for yourself. So between two panes of glass, we reach straight up. The left arm just finds its spot right outside the shoulder as we bend over, taking the left rib towards the left hip and then reach over. Now again, this is where my foot wants to come out. I say nay nay to that because I'm stronger. Shoulders squared, hips squared, hand on the hip, lift it up. I have to move a little farther away because my legs are long. So this is a harder side for me. So you'll see if you're paying close attention, a couple of mistakes, but I'm going to try and be as perfect as I can so I'm a good example person for you ladies and gentlemen out there. Let's do three more. And two. And one, keep it as lifted as you can. Flex the right foot to the bum, point the toe long. Each time you point the toe long, reach it longer. Trying to find length in Pilates is always a goal. Trying to find strength and control. Combining those three things, you've got it made. Two more. Ending on the extension with the last one, eight circles in each direction. Eight, seven, six, five, 
for my toes scraping the top of, of the table. So it gives me a nice thing, nice little point. Three, I'm going backwards now. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Right leg drops, lift yourself up. Uh, this is the yummy part, I like it so much. And then reach up with your right hand, assist the stretch by first growing tall and reaching over to the right. It gives a nice groin stretch for here as well, but we're looking to open up the left side waist. Good, growing tall, just let your arms come down. Now, kneeling on the mat, if you don't have a mat, you might wanna put a pillow under your knees. I'm going to double my mat over so that I have a little cushion for my knees. If you have knee problems, you're gonna really limit your range of motion for this. So if you, the farther back you go on your thigh stretch, it's good for your knees because it keeps, them, keeps the thigh stretch, keeps everything mobile from tightening up. But too much, obviously, for people with knee replacements who are currently you know, nursing a knee issue might be too much, so be mindful. So I'm gonna show you a side view first. I'm just gonna lean back and let the weights come up and then come forward. I'm gonna face you now though, so I'm not rude. The whole point is to keep your hips and shoulders forward. This would be a bad example again. I don't want you going like this and letting your bum come down. We keep almost like we're one big line and leaning back. The goal is to think of your bum coming towards your heels, but your hips remaining forward, your vision remaining forward. You don't want your neck to strain by looking too far up. So just look straight ahead, keeping your shoulders relaxed. The weights are optional, but the hands really do help. Because think of the law of physics, when your body goes in one direction, another part of your body wants to go in the other. Two more, lean back. Lean back. Now, a little chest press, palms forward, lean back, reach up to the ceiling, pull the weights down as you return. Nine more. The good thing about these little thigh stretches is that it's a double whammy. As we reach back, it's a nice stretch. As we come forward, we're working it. So it's a 50-50 exercise. You get the stretch and the work. And again, I'm tight. I've been running. I've been doing that Peloton. Peloton humbles me. I used to think I was fit. I am not. <laughs> Those people kill me. Two more. Last one. But let's stay kneeling just because you can see me more, I guess. So this is the way I have the camera set up. If you want to sit down in a chair or on the floor, just do whatever's comfortable. But we're going to just start with some bicep curls. Ten of each of the next things we're going to do. Three, a little bit faster pace. Four, five, six. Use your water bottles if you have them. Good, two more here. Elbows are close to the, to the obliques for this first one. Take them a little farther away. So we just basically lifted the elbows. They're not yet at the same level as the shoulders. Slightly lower, full range of motion. Reach out, pull it in. Four more here. I'm sweating, are you sweating? Three two, one, now elbow level, a little bit out to the side, so we're not straight in, just a little bit out to the side. Think of pulling something in. Fingers are long, thumbs wrapped around the weights if you have them. Get a pretty light grip on the water bottle if you're using that, you don't want the water bottle to fly away. Four more here. Three, two, one. Let's take it out, elbows are at shoulder level, palms towards me, down and up. If you have a rotator cuff issue, this is gonna be bothersome. So you're obviously gonna not use the weights and you're gonna come in and do a little bit of this. If that still troubles you, if you know your range of motion for this, go to that. Otherwise, you might wanna skip this part. We like to work the rotator cuff, the deltoid, all those muscles in there without rotating, but this particular exercise does, it does involve rotation. Now on the next one, it won't involve a rotation and we'll still be working the deltoids. So come down, slice it out, come forward, slice it out. If that's a problem, remember, down and in. You're still gonna be working it. Five more, four, reach it out. Three pounds on this, it's very challenging. So I want a little cred, a little star on my forehead for this. 
Hopefully when I get back to work, it won't look like I'm going to beat all of you up with my massive linebacker shoulders. Good last one. Oops, and reach it down. I think I just totally dented the desk. Don't tell Paul. Okay, the next is a series of things we're going to do, which is kind of easier to do because it gives each movement a break. I'm going to start with bicep curl, chest press, tricep press, up, drop the elbows, release. Bicep curl, up, tricep press, reach, drop the elbows, release. Eight more. So even though we're making the motions because we're switching the muscle focus, we don't get as fatigued for this. At least I don't. Although my shoulders are already quite worn. As you bend for your tricep press, try to keep your elbows pointing towards me and not winging out. That keeps it a little more specific to the tricep. Let's do two more. It's usual I cut, lost count. Shows none of us are perfect. I'm the queen of not being perfect. Back and down. Now we're gonna come back to that little up and down, but this time, last time we had our knuckles out, this time I'm gonna have the knuckles towards the ceiling, and I'm gonna ask you for just a little more bend to the elbow. So instead of this, I want you just to do a little of that. And let's just start right arm, left arm. This is going to progress to something a little more difficult. So if at some point you want to drop the weights or pick up lighter weights, or when we go to double arm, come back to single arm, no judgment, because you are definitely still working it, I guarantee. I joked earlier that we were doing arms so that I wouldn't have the energy to pick up my Moscow mule, but apparently I have not been working my arms enough because that Moscow mule is still raising to my lips more often than it should. It's easy to be off of work because you think you can have a cocktail at night, right? I'm gonna stop that crap right away. As you know, alcohol not only adds unnecessary calories, it also slows your metabolism down. So I think I'm finding the sorry end of that tail after a couple weeks in seclusion. Good, now let's just do, not going all the way down, not going all the way up, little kind of shuffles in the mid-range distance. So let's say between your chest and hips. This gets a little more difficult. We're gonna raise it up a little bit just between chest and shoulders, a little bit. It's hard, stick with me. Can you do 10 more? I think you can. Your grandma can do eight more, right? Your little kid could do five more. Your dog, if it had hands, could do three more. And you could do two more. And there's your 10 on that. Excellent, just shake it out a little bit. Good, on the next one, we just have one more exercise for the arms. We're gonna start though, if you can, holding on to both weights in one hand. If you can't, or if you have water bottles, just stick to one. So we begin knuckles facing away, knuckles face the ceiling, crossing over the body. Watch what my elbow's doing. It's going out to the side and then down, side, down. So really my right arm is crossing over to the front of the left shoulder. I have six pounds in my hands, it's difficult. Thus the sweat dripping down my face. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that or not. Try not to close up, try to come really close. Three more. Two, one, ha, that hurt. I'm gonna cross both over, lacing my fingers. Now my left hand's gonna cross over the right shoulder. This is my weaker side because I am right dominant. So that just means it's going to be achy sooner, achy more, but it does not mean that I do less. It doesn't necessarily mean I do more either. We're trying to always find that balance respecting that one side might be easier than the other. I lost count, so we'll say three, and two, and one. Let's take both weights, drop them safely to the ground, and come to the kneeling position. Cross the right arm over. I like to keep my arm long when I do this because it feels better. If you want to wrap it around, if that feels deeper or more comfortable to stretch for you, you can do that. And then hug the left arm over. Feels good, try to keep your shoulder relaxed away from the ears. Your fingers, just as we laced at the beginning of class, are gonna lace behind your hands and first draw along towards the floor and pull your shoulders away from the earlobes. Take that opportunity to let your neck come long like someone's pulling a string from the crown of your head towards the ceiling. 
And then if your shoulders allow for it, roll the shoulders together, opening up the collarbone, and reach the arms behind you lifted. They don't have to lift, but for me, that feels good. It stretches through the shoulder a little deeper, stretches the um, biceps and triceps a little bit as well. And then release, take your hands in the diving position, eyes to the belly, tuck your pelvis, stretching through the low back, big inhale and exhale. Before we come to stretch the hamstrings, I want you to take your hands behind you to the mat or to the heel of your foot on the right side, pull the hips forward, look behind you, reach behind you. This might be something where you hold on to maybe a chair or something behind you, but the goal is to not let the bum come back. We're opening up the front of the body through the hip flexors and stretching the quad. Let's come to the other side, reach behind to the heel, mat or chair. Once you do that, look behind you, but let the hip of the side that you're stretching come forward. So we're not gonna let it collapse open. Take a big breath, open up the front of the body, big inhale and exhale. Square yourself to me and sit on the floor, please. I'm gonna unroll my mat, lengthening both legs. Reach up towards the ceiling, wiggle your rib cage up, and forward fold. Flex the toes. Ah, I'm tight this morning. And press your hamstrings down. So after I do my cardio, my running, walking, or biking, it's always recommended that I stretch. And can I tell you that I've not been doing that? And I can tell right now. So I'm gonna give you a little hint. If you raise your bum above the level of your feet, I'm gonna use this little yoga brick, then you can touch your toes a little easier and get the hamstrings as close to the floor. This is still a deep stretch for me. That tells me that today I'm gonna to be working a lot on my stretching. We don't ever wanna get so tight that we can't touch our toes. That's what causes or contributes to low back pain and injury. Good, grow tall again. I'm gonna take the brick off. Take your feet in prayer position and your knees as wide as they can be. Use your hands to draw the heels in close to your pubic bone. And then with a tall chest, just kind of lean towards me. You guys know I have weird hips, so this is odd that you should get your knees down. Most people will be like this, and that's fine. I just have weird hips. Good, and now back stroke, back fingers away. Back stroke, back fingers away. Open up the chest. Don't crane into the neck and smash the vertebrae together. Just allow your chin to lift enough so that the sternum can peek at the ceiling. Take a big breath that travels up into your heart and exhale. One more into your heart and exhale. Excellent. Thank you for joining me. I'm gonna give you a little hint that has done a tremendous um, help to raising my spirits while we're in seclusion. Aside from working out, get some sunshine, take a walk, stay away from people, put your favorite tunes on, get an audio book, but getting outside helps. But also, I have been um, FaceTiming friends from all over the country and having virtual glasses of wine with them. You can certainly have a virtual club soda. Um, and it's been a tremendous way to connect some, to some of my female friends that actually I have not had enough time to do when I was working. So now's the time to strengthen those relationships we've had, strengthen your connection with your own time alone in your head, um, and try not to overthink things. <laughs> it's easy to do when you're alone, so find those distractions that are healthy and that feed your heart.